And what I want to show you today is how to build your own grow light so you can grow tomato transplants indoors and you can also use these for other seed varieties. But I want to keep it pretty simple and I want to go nice and slowly so I can explain to you how to build this and why um, you want to use the certain bulbs that you want to use. The other thing is, is this is just a plastic shoe box. It was about a buck at Home Depot. And I'm setting up this grow light for you, for somebody who just wants to grow a couple of plants and not do a whole process. Like my other videos show you how to start, you know, 50, 100 different plants. You move them from seed cells to cups. Everything that you're going to see here can be done in this container. And I will do other videos on how to set this up. But today is all about the grow light. What we have here is a receptacle that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. It has an LED bulb in there. I'll go over that in a second. That's been on. It, you can put your hand on it, so it's not going to get hot that it's going to burn anything or anything like that. In fact, this is plastic. The LEDs stay cool, so you can put them really close to your plant. This says right in here 150 watts, so you want to get a receptacle from Home Depot or Lowe's that can take a 150 watt bulb or lower. And it has a clamp. So I set this up just now. This is my fertilizer container. I wouldn't, you know, do this with water because you got electricity and water, but fill this up with sand or dirt. It'll clamp right onto here. Some people may put this on a shelf. It can hang like this. But the whole key is for the plant light, the grow light that you're building, to sit two or three inches above your plants. Now I'll talk more about the design in a second. Let me talk about the bulbs. One of the most important things, the most important thing is to have really intense light. Like if you put this up on a windowsill, you think it's getting enough light. It's not. These plants are going to be tall and spindly. That means they're going to be racing to get towards the light. They're going to be bent over and they're just going to be sickly looking. You want plants to be nice and stocky and strong. And the only way they get that is if they get enough light. So when you go to buy your lights, these are LEDs. These were $16 or $18, so what's that? About $8 to $9 a bulb. They're more expensive than the CFLs I'm going to show you in a second. But the same thing, you want daylight. Always look for daylight. You don't want the soft light or anything like that. And you want 100 watts. 100 watts is enough intense light that your plants will do fine. If you go and buy the CFLs, this is actually four light bulbs in here, and these were $7.77, so these are $2 a bulb. So you can get these, uh, the LEDs for about $8 or $9 a bulb, the CFLs for about $2 a bulb. And again, the CFLs say the same thing, daylight, 100 watts, that's what you want. And when you look on the back, you're going to see two scales. One's called Kelvin. The higher the Kelvin number, the closer it is to daylight. And this is 5,000 Kelvin. So you want a, a Kelvin rating for your grow lights that you're building from the basic lights that you can get at Home Depot's or low at 5,000 or 6,500 Kelvin. So you want it between 5,000 and 6,500. So 5,000 Kelvin is perfect. The other thing that you look for is lumens. And lumens is intensity, how intense the light is. Now when I talk about the, the um, big fluorescent tubes, they are somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 lumens. And that means they're brighter. These are, this one is actually 1,680 lumens. And then for the CFL, same thing on the back. This is 5,000 Kelvin. So again, you want between 5,000 Kelvin and 6,500 Kelvin. And you want to get as close as you can to 2,000 lumens. And this is 1,600. Now, because this isn't, you know, 2,000 lumens, the way that we make up for it is by simply leaving the lights on longer. And you can do that with your transplants and they're going to be perfectly fine and they're going to be nice and strong and they're going to look just like this. Now, why can you leave them on? Because a CFL bulb only costs you to run $2.77 per year. The CFLs are more expensive, but they're more cheaper to run. They're $1.80 per year. So even by leaving these on for 24 hours, you're spending pennies a day, if even that. All right, so we got the Kelvin, we got the Lumens. Here's the receptacle again. Again, you want a 15, um, I must said 1500 watt. You want a 150 watt receptacle. It can hold a 100 watt bulb. 100 watts is less than 150 watts, so this is perfectly safe. And here's the best way to grow your seedlings. So this is going to be set up however you want to do it. Start it out in the middle. And 
it's almost touching the plastic. But again, this doesn't get hot, so you don't have to really worry about it. So when you start tomato seeds, for day one through four, they usually don't germinate. Somewhere between day five and day 10, that's when they germinate. You want to make sure that the germinating seeds that are breaking the surface are hit by intense light. So on the fourth or fifth day, turn this on, leave it on for 24 hours. All right, so it's 24 hours of light. It's just getting light after light after light. That makes up for the lower lumens. It's plenty of light to feed the plant, so to speak, so that it stops growing. And what do I mean by that? If the light was way up here, or if it was in a windowsill, the seed germinates, and then it still thinks it's in the dark because the light's not intense enough, and it grows taller and thinner till it falls over, and it gets weak and spindly. By having this light on for 24 hours, it gets the light it needs, it stops growing tall, and then it starts growing more leaves, and that's what you want. You want the secondary leaves to start coming out when the plant is smaller and lower to the ground, and that just makes it stockier and stronger. So you're going to have three days of 24 hours of light when it first germinates, and when they're all germinated, on the fourth day, fifth day, and sixth day, you want about 18 hours of light. And then on day seven going forward, you want about 16 hours of light. And the best way to do that, so you don't have to worry about turning it on and off, is to get a timer. And the timers only cost somewhere between 6 and $10. They just go into the outlet on the wall, and then this plugs into it, and then you just set the timer. You can also move this around a little bit once they get bigger. You can have a day or two like this, and then a day or two like this. And that will really allow you to grow nice, solid seed starts. You want to start your tomatoes six to eight weeks before they would be ready to go out into the ground. You can also do this for peppers. And you can do this really for this setup for any kind of vegetable you want to grow. Vegetables that you would do as seed starts, but primarily tomatoes and peppers. Now, the other thing that I think is important is that you want to make sure you start these when your nighttime temperatures outside are going to be about 50 degrees. Because if you put your tomatoes out too early, they just sit there and get cold and don't do well. So you, you look on... Um, the internet, find your average starting date of 50 degree nights, and then you just count back six or eight weeks. I'm also going to do videos on how to set up this whole system. You know, and again, I'm keeping in mind, if you're just starting gardening, you just might want to know how to make a grow light. This is how you do it. That's the different bulbs that you need. You need either LEDs or the CFL. That's a CFL. These are the LEDs. You want 100 watts. You want daylight. And you want the intense light to sit above your plants just like this. Hope you enjoyed the video and it gives you some confidence in setting up your own grow light station to grow six or eight tomato plants or pepper plants. But this is small enough for you to give it a try. When you go and buy transplants, they're going to cost you about, I don't know, two fifty to three fifty a plant. So at three dollars a plant, that's what, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen dollars. For 18 bucks, you can get just about all the supplies you need, and you can do this for tomatoes, peppers, lettuces, anything that you really want to get out into your garden. This shoebox was a dollar. You can grow six to eight transplants in it, tomatoes or peppers, and it's big enough that you can start the seeds in this, let it grow to transplant size, and you don't need to move these around. For instance, there's a lot of videos, and in a lot of my videos, you start in these small seed cells, and you transfer them to cups, and you let them grow bigger. Well, rather than having you go through all that process, you can just grow them in a shoebox plastic container just like this or something similar to that. These are only a dollar at Home Depot, 98 cents, and this is how you set it up. You want to put in enough soil that you have about two to three inches. That will let a nice root system develop. That's why the plant can stay in here from when it germinates till it gets to the full size of transplant because there's plenty of soil in here for the root system to grow. So put in two and a half, three inches of soil and then you want to pack it down. You want a nice, solid starting base for your transplants. Put some more into there. And if you notice, this is dark. This already has water in it. And the reason you want to do that is you want to pre-moisten this before you use it. When it comes out of this bag, and this is what I recommend, it's about $5 a bag. I have plenty of videos to show you how to make your own, but if you don't want to, Jiffy Starting Mix, 5 bucks. I got that at Walmart and set up your starting base. Now what does pre-moistening mean? When that starting mix comes out of the bag, it's dry. It looks just like this. If you just put in dry mix in here and then you put in water, this would actually float and it could take 
several days for it to absorb the water because it's just so light and your seeds could drop to the bottom and just get messed up. So put it into a bowl, put some water in there and then with your hand just mash it through the water, pre-moisten it. This will absorb water quickly now. It's already got water in it, enough for you to set up the base and then when you go to water it will quickly absorb the water. The dry stuff really does float so it's kind of weird. So pre-moisten it. So now that you have your starting base set up, You're going to want to water from the bottom. And usually I have my container sit in another container with holes in the bottom. I fill up the tray and it absorbs water that way. You don't really want to poke holes in this. So get a water bottle, cut it down the side so that it's below this rim, just like that. And you're just going to drop it right down into the middle. Move all the starting mix out of the way. Put this around it. Now in the bottom of the water bottle, there's five or six holes I punched in there with a knife. And this is how you're going to water. The water will fill up in here, and then it'll slowly disperse through the bottom and take care of your transplants. For planting, six holes. You can do this for tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. Lots of different vegetables that you would start indoors. Now tomatoes, you want to start indoors six to eight weeks before the nighttime temperature really stays at 50 degrees and with the peppers you want to start them and eggplant 8 to 10 weeks before the outdoor temperature at night stays 50 degrees and the reason you want that is because they're warm weather plants so when the nights get into the upper 30s middle 40s they really don't grow so you don't want to put them out too early they're just going to sit there so this is how you set up your seed um, starting system in just a little bit of shoebox like this in about three weeks it's going to look like that. So you got another three um, to five weeks to go for them to grow. You can leave them in here. Now, say we're into near the eighth week. These are ready to go outside. How are you going to move these from here to the outdoors? Is about a week before you get to go outside, you're just going to get a knife and cut through the root systems. And you're cutting a nice big square here so that you are cutting the roots but you're not going to harm the plant. So you're cutting it into six squares. What that does is it cuts the roots. More roots will start inside this square here and in that week's time the plant will you know will have recovered from the cut. You're going to just take this square out and the root system should be really packed in there that the soil stays together and you just drop this into your container or into your earth beds by burying the tomato, whatever size it is, about halfway up the stem, drop it into the container or to the hole in the garden, and you will have nice, healthy transplants. So the previous video talked to you about how to set up the lighting. This shows you how to set up the um, shoebox so that you can grow your transplants and how you would get them into the ground. Um, in my next video, I'm going to talk about watering, fertilizing, and go in depth more about what kind of fertilizer you want to use for your indoor seed So structure. using this setup, and again, I designed this setup for the new gardener so that you could grow your own transplants, create your own grow light. So we're going to talk about water, watering and fertilizing based on a setup that's similar to this. You water when the top of your starting mix turns to a light color. What does that mean? Well, the starting mix coming out of the bag looks like this. Um, there's not a whole lot of moisture in there. So this is going to go from a dark brown to a light brown. As soon as the tops have dried, that's when you know it's close to the time to water your plant. The top will always dry out first. That's what you're looking for. Once this turns a light brown, you could wait a day or two after that because there's plenty of moisture down here. You'll even see it. So, you know, maybe two days, three days after it totally turns light, we're going to water it. Why are we doing that? We want the top to dry out because that really does disrupt fungus growth, mold growth, different diseases by letting the top dry out. And your plants don't always want to sit in a lot of moisture because they can get root rot. So you're eyeballing the top when it gets to a light brown, what it looks like when it comes out of the um, bag, just like that. You're going to wait two or three days, let the top dry more, and then we're going to water it. Now, when do you fertilize? Well, a couple of things. There's two kinds of fertilizers. There's a um, insoluble fertilizer, which is usually fertilizer that you put into your soil, into your garden, mix it in, and then the microbes break that 
fertilizer down into a form that your plants can use. Starting mix doesn't have any fertilizer in it. We're not putting in any non-soluble fertilizers in here, so there's not really a whole lot of fertilizer, if any. <clears throat> Excuse me. When a seed germinates, the seed coat, the seed itself has enough nutrition to get the plant growing to about this size. It has enough nutrition for the plant to break the surface, grow its first set of leaves. That's the first set of leaves. That's the clue when a plant gets its first set of leaves about this size that you might want to fertilize it. Now, we're going to fertilize our seed starts with water-soluble fertilizer. That's what's really important. Water-soluble fertilizer is in a form that your plant can absorb right from the water and put into its system. Now there's two kinds. You can buy an organic fertilizer. Whoops, this is the organic fertilizer. This is a chemical fertilizer. You can use either one. I use both depending on what's available. It doesn't matter to me. The key is, is that you want an NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium number to be a 555 or less. 5 nitrogen, 5 potassium, um, 5 phosphorus. The chemical fertilizers are usually pretty high, like this NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, is 1530, 15. That's too much. These aren't outdoors in containers or in the earth bed. So if you put in too much fertilizer into here, it's going to damage the plants. We want to bring this NPK number down to a 555 five, five or less. And all of us are going to be buying different fertilizers, so you can just do a little bit of math. So by cutting this to half strength, we're going to have a 7.5, a 15, a 7.5. Cut it down again to a quarter. Um, this will be down to, like, what is that, 3.75. This will be down to 7.5. That will be down to 3.75. That's close enough to a 555. So we're using this, something like this, at quarter strength. The Job's is an organic product. You can use it just like this. It's a 312. That's perfectly fine. That's enough fertilizer, even at this level, 312, to take care of your transplants. So we're going to water, and a setup like this probably needs to be watered maybe once a week every 10 days or so when the plants are just germinating because there's a lot of starting mix in here. And then maybe once or twice a week when they start getting to size and bigger over a six or eight week period. You're going to want to fertilize probably within 10 to 14 days. And this is how I set it up. I get a, a gallon like this. This is seed starting fertilizer less than a 555. And this is actually the Job's fertilizer just done the strength. So it's one tablespoon, one measuring scoop into a gallon of water. This is actually a, an iced tea bottle, so, and it looks like iced tea, so make sure you mark on there that it's for plants so people don't drink it. So let's just say, I just fed this one in another video, so I'm not going to feed it again. So this is at about the three-week mark, 21 days. I've watered it twice, and I've decided to feed it a little bit later. Even though I said 10 to 14 days, you're kind of watching the plants. If the plants are staying green, they're not getting yellow, you, you don't need to rush the fertilizer. In the whole process of the six to eight weeks that it takes a tomato to grow, or the eight to 10 weeks it takes for peppers to grow, you probably only need to do this twice. So to do it, let's just say this has become a nice light color. This size is the perfect size to put moisture and fertilizer in there. So I'm just gonna fill it just like that. That's my first feeding, let's just say for these guys. So next week when this dries out, I'm just going to put water in it. Um, if they aren't struggling in the two weeks from today since I fed them, I'm not going to put any fertilizer in there. Probably in the third week I might. Now, the reason I said 10 to 14 days earlier is because that's the minimum. At a maximum, you probably want to be at 14 to 21 days. But you're sort of going to have to judge it. The whole key to this is not to overfeed your plants because if you put in too much fertilizer you can actually harm them so you know just take it slow this will set this up for watering and for feeding i hope that makes sense so let me just do a recap when you water when the top has dried completely about two or three days later fill this up to the top with just water that will be enough moisture to probably last a week when the plants are bigger you might have to do it twice a week when you're going to water uh, when you're going to feed the plants you could feed them, you know, 10 to 14 days, 14 to 21 days for your first feeding, depending on what you're growing. And then you probably want to go at least one week, if not two weeks, of just watering and then feeding one more time. And that's plenty of food for your transplants. So now that they're growing, they're doing well, 
And we're getting to the stage that they're ready to go outside. Because they've been growing inside, they are not used to the sun. And if you put these right outside into eight hours of full sun, the leaves are going to actually burn. So you have to put these through a process called acclimation. Now, when these plants are tiny like this, you could put them outside in the sun if the temperatures outside are 40 to 50 degrees for like a half an hour and let them get some sun and then bring it inside. And what they're going to do is they're going to get used to the UV rays from the sun. The leaves are going to toughen up. They're going to not get sunburn is what they basically get. And you do that every um, couple of days or so as they're young and they will acclimate to the sun. Now, if you can't do that because your temperatures are too cold, when these are ready to go outside or a week before they're ready to go outside, you want to slowly over one week's time put these outside in full sun for a half an hour for a couple of days, then put them outside for about an hour in full sun for a couple of days, and then maybe on the sixth and seventh day you can give them two hours of sun, bring them inside, let them sit for a day. That process of slowly introducing them to the sun is going to prevent these leaves from getting burned by the sun when they go out full time. And again, a week before these would be planted into your containers or to your ground, you want to acclimate them slowly to the sun, starting with 30 minutes for a couple of days to an hour for a couple of days and kind of working your way up. There's no exact way to do it, but that will help your plants not be damaged when you put them out. And believe me, if you go right from plants that have grown indoors under the grow lights, put them outside, you're going to be asking me, what happened to my leaves? Why are they bleached white? Why are they scorched? Why did, why did some of the plants die? The sun is simply too strong for them because they're not getting the UV coming into the plants. So I hope this gives you an idea of how to water, how to feed. Make sure you use water-soluble fertilizer and acclimate these plants to the sun when they're ready to go out. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.